things going. Okay, welcome to our webinar on returning to work. I am Emmanuel Clement, Partnership Manager for SEMLEP. SEMLEP is a public-private body and one of its uh, roles is to help businesses with information on COVID-19 via a team of business advisors and webinars. During this webinar, we welcome your questions, so please type them in the chat function and Neil will we'll, uh, interact with you and uh, ask you uh, questions uh, uh, through chat as well, so please don't hesitate to use it. As you and your organization prepare to return to the office, how can you use the events and experiences of living through this crisis to come back better, stronger, wiser and more resilient? To tell us about this, our guest speaker Neil Massa, Managing Director of Smarter Not Harder, the UK's leading provider of time management training to transform personal product productivity. Neil, over to you, please. Thank you very much, um, Emmanuel. Um, welcome, everyone, and uh, welcome to this, um, the third in our series of COVID webinars. Um, subject today is remotely managing the transition back to work as lockdown is lifted. I want to ex start by explaining what this webinar isn't about, just to get clear. Um, it's not about desk distancing. It's not about the use of lifts or deep cleaning or hand sanitizer provision. This is all about you. It's all about you as a leader. And it's an opportunity for you to stop just for 45 minutes and just reflect on how you intend to lead your people on the rest of the journey out of lockdown to what people refer to as the new normal. On the agenda, I'll give you a bit of background, um, some feedback that uh, came out of a recent survey. I wanna talk about what's certain right now, what's not, and the requirement for what I call a new focus, and then share with you three important focal points for you to consider. We've got 45 minutes. Um, Within that, I've built in um, a number of interactive exercises. Um, it's good if you've got a pen and paper handy so that you can participate in those. And then at the end, um, an open sort of Q&A session, um, should you have any additional questions. So in terms of background, if you've not participated in um, any of our webinars or worked with us before, I'm a director at Smarter Not Harder, and our core business is all about improving employee productivity um, which means most of the time we're working with leaders and managers like yourselves um, to help them you know and you and your teams find smarter ways of working most of the time we're working with people that are office based but of course just recently that shifted we have seen a trend over the last couple of years where people are moving more towards sort of remote ways of working but certainly the last eight weeks we've had more conversations about the about that than ever before. I've been working remotely for 17 years. I'm a massive fan. And of those 17 years, um, 15 of them have been spent managing people remotely. So during that time, I've managed some really important projects remotely. And I've also had to lead um, during some times where some pretty intense focus was required. So the situation that we're in right now with COVID, you know, does bear some similarity um, to situations I've experienced in the past. However, I have to say this is the first time that I've led during a global pandemic and hopefully, um, you know, it will be the last. Um, in response to um, our recent survey, which went out to several hundred people, we got several hundred responses. I just thought I'd share with you um, the, um, the feedback that we got just to give you a sense of what um, other people in other businesses um, uh, are thinking and feeling right now. I had a webinar this morning with um, 50 odd people from the IOD, um, just to give you a kind of a, a, a for instance. So a lot of people out there right now feel as though that they've learned a lot of lessons during this crisis. Some of them valuable, some of them painful, but people have felt that actually it's been valuable in terms of learning about their business. Most people, um, out there feel that they can um, bounce back stronger 
um, from this crisis. That said, there was quite a few leaders that said whilst they felt confident that they could bounce back better and stronger, perhaps as an organisation they didn't necessarily feel that that was an opinion shared by every member of their team, which I get. The next question is quite interesting because there's been um, a lot of research done on the productivity and motivation of employees who are consulted on where they work and how they work. Um, and what um, the researchers discovered, probably no real surprise here, is that people who are surveyed and consulted on where they work and how they work tend to be a lot more motivated um, and a lot more um, engaged than those that are just told what to do. So right now, only about 20, 25% of the businesses that we've spoken to have surveyed and consulted their staff. So if you haven't done that, it's just uh, kind of a, uh, a, a nudge to say, maybe you want to consider doing that if you feel that that would be um, valuable to you. Um, the things that are concerning people right now, um, they're the usual suspects actually. Um, you know, it's the usual things like um, health, personal finances, childcare, getting through the next six to eight weeks if we're still not allowed to go back to work, redundancies. It's the usual suspects that are occupying people's minds right now. Without doubt, more people felt that their organisation would change their attitude um, to working and work locations. About 60% felt that they would now move to a more remote um, way of working. People that weren't sold on the idea of um, allowing people to work remotely have actually been um, quite pleasantly surprised at how productive people have been working from home. And finally, when we ask people what's most challenging about this whole planning process and planning to return to work, you know, people said, you know, it's difficult because I've never done it before, but also because of the sort of sheer complexity, really. Um, and the number of variables um, involved in the process, but also because there's just a huge amount of uncertainty right now. And of course, um, you know, it can be difficult um, to plan when there is a high degree of uncertainty. However, you know, there are some things that we're uncertain about, but there are also some things that we are totally certain about. So, you know, we're certain that the lockdown will gradually lift. How and when precisely? We're uncertain and um, we're uncertain what the future of work will look, sound and feel like, but we're either going to be working from offices, working from home or remotely, or a combination um, of those two. And we know that for sure. And what we also know for sure is that wherever people work and whatever they end up doing, what we know as leaders and managers in a business is that we want our people to be healthy, productive and happy wherever they end up working, whatever they end up doing. And I think we're absolutely certain about that. And there's a lot of discussion in the media about that. There's also a lot of discussion in the media about, and they use this phrase, building back better. I think there's a hope out there that we will emerge um, from the crisis in better shape. Um, that we will emerge better, stronger, wiser and more resilient than we went in, perhaps with some scars, but absolutely that is what um, a lot of people are hoping for. Now, whether that's possible for you or not, um, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But if that is going to happen, what's going to be required is some focus in order to make sure that that does happen. But of course, focus right now, right now for you, right now for your people can be difficult when things are uncertain and when certain things are outside of your control. So I've created um, this Boston box, this grid. Um, you'll be familiar um, with this kind of um, representation of um, different variables. We've got control on the y-axis on the left and certainty along the bottom, along the horizontal axis. So there's four quadrants and the quadrant that I think as leaders, we need to give a lot of time and attention to and certainly get our people to give time and attention to is the top right hand corner. Things that are within our control and things of which we are certain. So that box there is really for me very, very important that I give a lot of my time and attention to that area because that's where, you know, that's where the motivation is, that's where the energy is, and that's where a lot of our focus needs to be. And within that quadrant, um, I want to talk about three things specifically. 
Um, I'd like to talk about your COVID story, the lessons um, from the crisis and uh, the subject of working smarter as a result of this. And I'm going to go through each of those individually and get you to participate in some exercises um, and, and interact with me um, in each of those three areas. So moving on to um, the first one, your COVID story. I think in the years to come, um, people will talk about this crisis. They will look back on it and it will remain part of our history and spoken about um, quite often. The question I've got for you is though, what will people say about you? What would they say about you as a leader? What would they say about your team? And you know, what would they say about your organization? Well, you know, maybe at the moment you're not certain, but what I'm certain of is, is that you are writing your COVID story right now, consciously or unconsciously, you know, you're the author of that story, you know, through your actions and what you do. So I'd like to explore that theme a bit further. I'm going to share with you my COVID story to begin with, and then I'm going to ask you to think about yours and what it is you would want people to say about you. So excuse me while I blow my own trumpet for a little while. Um, but I want to just talk to you about some of the things that I've managed to achieve over the last eight weeks. Um, I've um, written and delivered um, over 30 webinars now, the first of which was on the 26th of March. As a result of that, I've helped hundreds of organisations to get their head around this kind of whole remote working thing that was thrust upon them. But in particular, um, I've helped a lot of charities um, who have been. Um, in this predicament. So I'm pleased about that. Um, I've developed and been party to developing some new products and services for our business, which have been um, a lifeline um, to us um, through the, um, uh, the pandemic. I've implemented um, the Daily Mail, so no prizes for imagination in the title, but you know as well as I do that as a, as a leader or as a manager, People come to you for inspiration, they come to you for motivation, they come to you for positivity, and you have to be the centre of all of that for people. Um, but it dawned on me that my leadership team, do you know what, they must be getting a little bit drained because who is it that motivates the leader and the manager, you know? Because that can be a little bit of a lonely place sometimes. So what I did was um, I started to circulate amongst the leadership team at the end of the day my highlights for the day, three, four, five things that were really good about the day. And they started to um, reciprocate. Do you know what? That's really made a difference to the way that I close out my day because I've been putting in 110% as you probably have the last couple of months. And actually to end on some good news every day, that just kind of topped up my tank. So that's what the Daily Mail is. And I had a pretty sizable um, item published in the Irish Times about sort of remote working and productivity. So those are my achievements. I'd like to think as a leader that when this is all over and, and I look back and other people look back on what I did, that they're going to say that I was inspiring, that I was committed. That I was very creative in the things that I came up with. But, you know, honest. And I, I put that on there, not because I wasn't honest before the virus started. Um, quite the contrary. But I've made a conscious effort to be really honest with my people about how I've been feeling over the last couple of months. Um, to sort of let them know, you know, um, times when I'm feeling good, but, you know, times when I'm actually, you know, struggling a bit because I just felt that if I wasn't prepared to sort of share the way I was feeling, it would be difficult for some people to do the same. I thought I needed to go there first. So that's why I put that in. I'd like to think that looking back on this, um, and certainly from my perspective, my team has been incredibly focused. They haven't wasted a minute. They've been exceptionally strong not just for the business, but also for their families. They've been incredibly supportive of everybody um, in the team. And they've been incredibly tolerant and understanding, particularly of me on those moments when I've needed people to be tolerant and understanding. And you all know what I mean by moments like that, I'm sure. And then from outside our organisation, I'd like to think that people from the outside looking in have gone, Do you know, well, we've been responsive, we've been supportive, we've given people some good advice. You know, and on the whole, we've generally been pretty positive and upbeat. So that's kind of my story so far as I think it's unfolding. You know, the essence of my story, if I was just to choose three words, would be this. That 
I've been honest, supportive and inspiring. And I've underlined and emboldened the word supportive because when I went through this exercise, I didn't do it just for the sake of it. I did, did it because I thought, I just needed to stop and kind of check where I am right now as a leader, as I lead through this crisis. And the thing that I realized I'd been doing a lot of was leading from the front. And that's fine when that's what you need to do. But sometimes you need to lead a bit from the back. And it dawned on me that I needed to do that. I needed to take a step back and just be a little bit more supportive and let um, you know, my team get out more in front there. So that's why I've done that. So that's my story. Um, the question is, what's yours? So I asked you to get a pen and paper handy. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to grab that pen and paper now and just create four columns. Achievements, you, your team, and um, from the outside. And if you can put those columns down, because what I'd like to do now, building stages with you is I would like you to um, answer the following questions. So I'm going to give you a couple of questions and then I'm going to give you um, a little while to write down your thoughts and your responses to those questions and I'll repeat that until we've built the, um, the sort of um, the foundations of your story. So the first question is looking back on the crisis Looking back on the lockdown so far, what have you done that you're personally proud of or really pleased about? First question. Second question, how would you as a leader like to be remembered after all this is over? Just three or four words. So I'm going to give you one minute. I'll keep an eye on the time, folks, just to think about those questions and write your answers onto that sheet of paper. Your minute starts now. Counting you in, three, two, one, zero. Okay, minute's not a long time, just kind of want you to get this process started. You can um, finish it off later. Third question, describe your team during the crisis. How would you like your team to be remembered during this crisis? I want you to capture three or four words or phrases to describe your team and the second question after that, or the next question after that, how would you like your organisation to be remembered by the people outside your organisation? That could be your customers, your clients, your peers in the industry, your competition. Three or four words or phrases to describe how you want to be remembered by them. So again, one more minute for you to capture your thoughts around that. Four, three, two, one, zero. So I'm a big fan of stopping and reflecting. I think it's um, 
a really healthy thing to do, but I think some people think too much, don't take enough action. And for me, actions are what good, are what going to write. It's actions that are going to write your story. You know, actions speak louder than words. So from the list that you've created of words, I'd like you to extract those kind of three key words that capture the essence of your story right now. But the really important bit, and I think the most important point is, you know, so what is it that you're going to do after having a few minutes to reflect on these questions that's going to help you kind of live that story that you want to live, if you like. For me, that realisation that I needed to stop leading from the front and start leading from the back, if you like, to be um, a bit more supportive, what that did to me was it made me realise that I needed to be a bit more proactive in terms of asking my team, is there anything I can do to support you today? I needed to change my behaviour and that needed to be visible to people. So I want to give you just one more minute for you to catch your keywords and, and also to think about what is that one action. And when you decide that one action, you can type it into the chat so I can see um, the sort of things that you plan to do as a result of just having this three minutes to reflect. Five, four, three, two, one. See you later. So if you wouldn't mind just typing into chat, give me an idea of perhaps the action that you'll be taking um, to um, perhaps um, change what you're doing right now to perhaps lead in a way that um, might be even more valuable um, to your people. That'd be much appreciated. Be more inspiring, share more good news. Yeah, there's plenty of bad news out there at the moment, Stephen, isn't there? It's easy to go and get that. There's tons of it. Yeah. Communicate good news. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was chuffed with that idea. I have to say work-life balance, making sure that we keep those things going. I've been focusing a lot on my exercise. I feel that I need to make um, a priority of looking after me right now because it's easy um, to sort of not look after yourself and put other things first. You know, I think that's really important. Yeah, listening to people. Yeah, I think it's. Um, I think it's really important that people just feel heard. Um, doesn't really matter what you come back with. I think just them the opportunity to talk out loud and um, express how they're feeling. Perhaps, you know, it's a bit of a one-way process. I don't think you have any visuals. From looking at my screen oh what's this sorry currently only a one-way process i don't think you have any visuals from looking at my screen um you are kidding let me just check um emmanuel can you see my slides yes yes okay ken i'm not really sure um what the issue is there unless there are loads of other people out there that can't see my slides I'm unclear as to um, what the problem is. So, um, okay, so people are saying that they can see them fine. Um, it must just be an issue on um, your platform, Ken. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what to do to help you there. Manuel, I don't know if you want to have a look to see what's going on there or ask Sam. So thanks for your feedback there, folks. I'm going to um, keep the um, momentum going. I hope that um, first bit of reflection um, has proved um, interesting for you. The second focal point that I mentioned was um, lessons learned. You know, during this crisis, we've all suffered losses, some far deeper, far worse than others. You know, some of us have lost family, um, others have lost businesses. You know, it's there's there's a huge amount of loss. Um, you know, our hope is that we can build back better from this, but to do so, we're going to need to make sure that none of the valuable learning 
um, which has taken place is lost. You know what, these have been incredibly expensive lessons that we've been taught here. You know, let's not waste any of them that the virus has taught us. You know, for me, this has been a little bit like an outward bound experience. I know most people when they do team building and they want to learn about themselves and the people they work with, they go to the far reaches of Scotland, get freezing cold and dangle people upside down from ropes. Well, actually, what we've had is we've had one of those experiences as a result of lockdown. And I think there are some incredibly interesting things that can be learned. The question is, what have you learned? But more importantly, um, which of the lessons of which there has been many will make you better, stronger, wiser and more resilient? It's those that I think we need to um, filter on um, and focus on. So again, get your pens and your paper handy. What I'd like you to do is I'd just like you to consider this question, but from three different perspectives and see what comes out of answering this question from those three different perspectives. I want you to think about personally, in what way are you better, stronger and wiser and more resilient as a result of the lockdown so far? In, as a team, in what way are you better, stronger, wiser and more resilient? And thirdly, as an organisation, in what way are you better, stronger, wiser and more resilient? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to um, collect your thoughts. I will then share with you what um, my response to those three questions has been, um, and we can entertain uh, a little bit of chat. So two minutes, give that a bit of thought. about halfway through. Thirty seconds to go. I don't know if that's fixed it. Anyway, right, buzzer, um, buzzed. Um, so when I reviewed those questions um, from those different perspectives, um, you know, from a personal point of view, um, the thing that I learned was that, uh, that I could be a bit more confident going forward about our business. Um, I didn't, I didn't think necessarily beforehand that I wasn't confident, but actually as a result of being put in what was an incredibly difficult situation, you know, 85% of our revenues disappearing in three weeks. You know, if somebody had said to me that would happen, I would have thought I might have folded under the circumstances. But you know what? Personally, um, I've learned that I'm a lot more resilient as an individual than I thought I ever was from a business perspective. Um, you know, the things that I've learned, and there's three things that have really 
come home to me and um, my colleagues is the um, certainly the value um, of really good data and making sure that you treat data like it's important and that's been um, a real um, aha moment for us so we are much more careful uh, with the way that we um, gather manage and, and use our data it's been a really important lesson for us i don't think we really appreciated just how valuable that was the power of virtual media so something like this so something like zoom we used to use it a bit but we didn't really use it to the extent that we're using it now and you know what i don't really know why if you said to me why didn't you use it more neil do you know what i really don't know why but being forced into this situation has got us to realize just how valuable um, a medium this is um, and other virtual media that we've used as well and then the other thing is i've got a brilliant team you're probably in the same situation as me um, and it's not that I take them for granted, but when you've been working with people for years, sometimes you just don't realise what you've got. And this um, situation has really made me appreciate just how fantastic my team are. Um, and I think um, sometimes it's, um, it's easy to forget um, what you've got when you get it every day. Um, and so those for me are the, um, the sort of the, the, the main um sort of learnings if you like if you'd like to chat in uh, tap into chat what some of the main lessons for you have been maybe just one point that's really important for you it would be nice to hear the lessons that you've learned coming out of this assuming that now the system can do what it needs to do more confident in the strength of our customers yeah the relationships i imagine you really know i think who your friends are right now you know this really gets i think to the core of relationships who's there for you who's not useful mix between home and office yeah absolutely i know so many people i mean i'll just think about one ceo that i spoke to recently she said that her husband vowed that the only place that he could do his job was in the city of london after five weeks of lockdown he's vowed that he'd never ever work full-time in the city again i think that really has shown us how valuable that mix can be um what else have we got Brilliant. Ken, you're back in the room. Sorry, fella. Um, I am running the webinar again next week if you um, get the urge to come back if you've missed stuff, but uh, I'm glad that you're with us all now. So I've got um, a little bit of time to go. Don't want to outstay my welcome. Um, let me um, move on and uh, get through to the, um, the third and final focal point, which I think, you know, arguably, um, is um the most important not travel 100 miles for a regional meeting every month yeah let's have an end to that mike absolutely absolutely without a shadow of a doubt right focal point number um two then just to finish off you know i think this is a valuable exercise to do with your team to get them to sit in those three different places and to reflect on and um, the lessons they've learned bring them all together you know this is something that could take um you know 20 30 minutes at a team meeting and i think is incredibly valuable to do right now two months in be really good to land what are the key lessons so when i send you the deck the questions and the layout will all be there for you to use should you um want to do so in terms of working smarter focal point number three um there's something that's occurred which we've labeled the lockdown productivity phenomenon and it's this that many people who I presume were already really productive working in an office, claim that they've now been even more productive whilst working from home. And I have heard that consistently um, for many, many weeks. People saying, man, I just can't believe hour for hour, 
how productive I've been working from home. Now that is fascinating because that raises four really, really important questions. The first question is, why is that? Okay, and I'm gonna ask you for your theories on that a little bit later. The second is, how do we unlock more of it? So if somebody has become a bit more productive and say that's 5%, you know, is there maybe another five or another 10% that could be unlocked? Our view is that it's probably close to 15% of untapped productivity, which exists with most workforces. So how do we unlock more of it? The third question is how do we transfer it? So let's imagine that we've got somebody who's working from home right now and they're incredibly productive, actually reporting that they're more productive. When they have to return to working to the office, which that will happen for many people, how do we make sure that we transfer that additional productivity back to the office environment, which is possible, but how do we do that? And then fourth question is, how do we sustain those levels? So it could be, and I've been speaking to a lot of organizations where um, they've decided that they are now going to have um, a significant number of their employees working permanently from home. So working from home for six to eight weeks is very different from working from home for six to eight years, okay? Um, so if somebody is really productive now, you know, how is it that they can keep that going forever? Okay, so four really, really important questions. Um, and the reason why these are so important is because a number of people are having to run their businesses with fewer employees. And being able to harness that extra capacity could be the difference between doing well or not. Um, I'm sure a number of you are in a situation where you've had to let people go, or if things don't change, you'll have to let people go. Clearly the work won't go away, but the people have. So if we can harness that additional capacity, which has presented itself through the lockdown phenomenon, we might be able to bridge the gap. So what I've known over the years, for many, many years through the research that I've done, is that it doesn't matter if you work on a yacht, uh, in an office, from a coffee shop, or from a room upstairs, productivity, good practice, transcends physical boundaries. Good practice, good habits, they transcend those boundaries. And the most recent evidence, whilst we've known this for a long time, the most recent evidence for us as an organisation has happened just recently since the lockdown. It's been the perfect testing time. So we started a whole host of projects before um, COVID and before the lockdown. And some of those projects were in the follow-up phase. So we've done our follow-up with people in um, lockdown. We did the initial work with them pre-lockdown and gave them a whole bunch of productivity, good practices to implement in the office. They've then been shoved into and forced into working from home. And so what we've been able to do is been able to ask lots of people, hundreds of them, has what you've been given to make you more productive in the office, has that translated and transferred into the working from home environment? And of course, good practice, good habits, they do. So we've got recent evidence to sort of back that up, if you like. Um, but I'm interested, and this is gonna be our sort of like final um, sort of conversation piece, if you like. I'm interested in why you think people are saying that they um, are more productive. I wanna give you a minute to capture your thoughts and then I'm going to ask you to share them. So a minute on why you think people are saying they're more productive during lockdown. Your minute starts now.
Okay, just a minute. So if you would um, be so kind as to um, share with me um, in the chat your um, theories on why people have said that they're more productive, I'd be um, eager to um, see what you think. You lose the idle chat and it's um, more business focused, so uh, greater focus. That said, you need some soft engagement times, yeah, absolutely. Less chit chat. Conversations now have um, a bit more purpose. Okay. What other reasons do people believe explain why? People report being more productive. Well, it doesn't look like there's any more coming through. Oh, they're at their desk more. Um, home desk, I presume. Um, no commute. Maybe the um, the commute takes it out of people a little bit. So nice, comfortable surroundings, maybe more comfortable than the office that they work in. Um, you know, if you have got the space, it's perhaps um, a little bit quieter um, and you can just kind of get on with stuff. So a lot of this is to do with um, sort of um, interruptions and distractions. Um, so, thanks for sharing in the chat. What's happened during the lockdown is because of the constraints that are placed on people, because of the change that's been imposed, and um, it's caused um, certain sort of good practices um, to be to surface and to become more more prevalent and visible. It's forced people into um, a different situation so there's actually 16 things that go on when um, people work in this way that will explain um, whether they are more or less productive um, I won't go through um, all 16 but I want to highlight a couple before we close mindful that we're at 1445 it's going to take that minute that we um, or two that we had at the start to get people onto the call but if somebody's been working in an office for a number of years, what they do is they get into a rhythm and a routine and they just don't question it. And the rhythm and the routine and the structure that you unconsciously develop has got some inherent pluses, but it will have some inherent minuses. OK, and those things don't get um, reviewed because there's no need to review them because you're just in the routine. What lockdown has done is it's forced everybody to stop and think about their routine and structure. And of course, when you review things with a fresh set of eyes, quite often you come up with new ways of working that are more and productive. So that's the first thing that explains why people are more productive because it's the first time in a long time that they've actually sat down and they've thought about their routine, their structure, and how they go about doing things. When they go back, they'll have the opportunity to do the same again. So there'll be a couple of review points in a very short space of time somebody's worked in the same office for five years, chances are they haven't had that review for five or well, four years, six months. The other thing is, is that I think people have been um, quite thoughtful when it comes to the way they communicate. In the early stages of lockdown, there was just colossal number of meetings, far too many for most people. There was a huge number of emails and things flying around, messages clogging up people's inboxes um, and um, laptops and um, devices and what's happened during lockdown is people have realized that actually we need to get a lot clearer about our channels of communication so do you know what if it's banter let's put that 
through WhatsApp so that we don't have all our banter getting in the way of the important stuff. Let's put our, some of our um, sort of business um, as usual stuff through email, never emergencies through email. Let's just put the uh, regular stuff through email. And if there's an emergency, let's use, you know, a different um, form of communication. People have got a lot smarter uh, around the way they um, communicate as a result of this. And that's because they've had to review it again and think about um, the way they do things. So that explains why people are working a bit smarter. There are clearly some people that have found it much more difficult um, and that would be for a whole host of other reasons. So just to finish off folks, so I don't want to outstay my welcome. You know, it's all about what you do, I guess, as a result of spending um, a bit of time with me. In summary, I think it's important to give some of our attention to that top right quadrant. There's a lot of energy there. There's a lot of motivation there in that top right hand quadrant. You know, think about your story. You're writing it every single day, consciously or unconsciously. What's that new area of focus going to be for you? When it comes to um, your teams, maybe you want to just do that simple exercise of thinking about, um, you know, the important lessons from those three perspectives. If you want to use our framework, please do. And you know what? Have a conversation about ways to work smarter. You know, what is it that people have discovered um, that enables them to work just that little bit smarter when working from home if you want um some help with that feel free to get in touch um you know we'll give you some um free advice on that if you're interested to know a little bit more about what you can do to you know increase productivity transfer those four key questions that i mentioned so that's all from me um if you've enjoyed what you've heard please tell others if you haven't please don't if you want to email me directly with a question then feel free to do so. That's my email address. Um, if you'd like to give your feedback, um, that would be much appreciated. We will then um, send you a consolidated version of the deck of slides so that you've got that to refer to. Webinars one and two, um, they're still going, um, still relevant, still current. You can um, go to those independently at our website um, and you can do that for free as you're part of Semlet. Um, and there is um, webinar number four in the pipeline, but uh, details of that are yet to be announced. So that's me done, folks. Um, I don't know if there's um, any questions at all. Uh, if there is, um, then please type them into chat. I'll let it run for a minute in chat. And if it's um, not showing any questions, then um, I'll um, bring things to um, a close. If you've enjoyed the webinar and you want to um, show your appreciation in the chat, then um, it's been you know, quite a lonely experience for me here without seeing any faces or anything like that. So if you have appreciated it, have found some things useful, it'd be nice to hear. Um, so I'll leave the clock running for a minute and just keep my eye on the chat for any questions. That looks like Montenegro behind you, Sam. I mean, um, Emmanuel. Yes, it is, yeah. Thanks, Neil. I hope um, people, you know, had uh, more thinking Thanks, more about the experience and uh, lesson learned are very important and, and successes as well. You know, what, what have we achieved? And uh, it's quite important to reflect on that, actually. Yeah, most definitely. So thank you all to take part. Um, I'm just going to um, close in a moment, but uh, please uh, continue to join our webinars. The next one is actually a networking event in partnership with Metro Bank, where we've got uh, a company speaking uh, about their experience uh, as growing as a business, but also uh, helping the NHS with uh, the industry they're working in. So um, it, it's on the 18th of June. and um, as Neil said, we're going to send you a follow-up email with the recording of the webinar and uh, a few questions. So if, if you've got any feedback, we really appreciate uh, if you could uh, send that to us. So thank you very much and hope to see you again on our future webinars. We're producing some more in the next few weeks. <laughs>